Okay, so we're just going to take a look at some preconceptions about a line of best fit. So yesterday you guys looked through a Desmos activity and on one of the first couple slides you said what you thought was important about drawing a line of best fit based on what you've learned before and just kind of some thoughts about what you think line of best fit means. So the same list is listed here. It might have been in a different order on your Desmos activity as they were randomized, but this still covers all of them. So the first point, the line should pass through the origin. About 9% of you thought that was important. The line should pass through as many points as possible. 70% of you thought that was an important piece. The line should go in the direction of the trend. 92% of you thought that was important. The line should go through the first and last point. About 30% of you thought that. The line steepness should match the trend. 87% of you thought that was important. And then finally, the line should have equal number of points above and below the line. About 30% of you thought that was important. So now let's take a look at an example of a scatter plot and investigate some of these preconceptions. Similarly to how you did in the Desmos activity, now we're just looking at a different scatter plot to give you guys a different um, example. So in this particular um, example, you can see that the person thought the line should pass through the origin. They forced it through the zero, zero spot. And at first glance, you might think this is an okay trend line. The trend of this data is clearly going upward as I move from left to right. The dots are higher on the right and lower on the left, so it's an upward trend. I also think about one of the other points said that the points should be spread out um, above and below the line. Well, approximately half are above and half are below the line. So there's lots of those criteria that are occurring here. Let's take a look at another way to kind of investigate the trend. And that way is what I just call covering up half of the graph. So if I cover up the first half of the graph and we just look at the data for the second half and see how well the red trend line matches that data. Well, what I can see is that most of the data is actually below our trend line. What if we look at the beginning half of the data? Most of our data here is actually above our trend line. When I have a discrepancy there where on one side it's above and one side it's below, that makes me think I need to adjust my steepness of my line. Okay, let's take a look at a different um, preconception. So in this one here, the person um, forced the trend line through the first and last point. And in this case, we can see that all of the points except for the first and last are below the line. Now that won't always occur when you force through the first and last point, um, but it just, it happens to in this case, okay? So again, if we just take a look quickly at that, um, cover up half the graph, at the end they're all below, at the beginning they're all below. When that happens, it makes me think I need to translate or shift my line up or down. So in this case, I would have to shift my line down to make it a little more balanced. This one here, the person has thought that the line should pass through as many points as possible. So in this case, the line is passing through five points. That was the max I could get when I played with this line of best fit. Let's do that same cover up approach. When I look at the second half, all of my data points are above my line of best fit. That means that trend line is not good for representing that data, at least for that half of the graph. If we look at the beginning half of the graph, we're a little bit more balanced there. We've got two and four, so that's pretty close. It doesn't have to be exact, um, but it should match on the beginning half and the second half of the data. So that tells me that this trend line doesn't match it that well. So again, in the second half of the data, all the data points were above. So I'm going to either have to shift or I'm going to have to change my steepness. If I change my steepness a little bit, I can get a trend line that looks like this. Let's look at the criteria that this is covering. So the line should go in the direction of the trend. The trend is upward, this line is going upward. The line's steepness should match the trend. That looks pretty good, it's about the right steepness. And then the line should have equal number of points above and below the line. Let's try the cover-up strategy. Looking at the second half, they're pretty balanced. Looking at the first half, they're pretty balanced. So this is actually a pretty good trend line for this set of data. 
Another way of looking at whether or not your trend line is good or to decide where to put your trend line is actually drawing an oval around all of your data. So if I draw um, an oval around this data, so it might not cover up exactly all of your data points, but it should gather most of them. Your line of best fit should kind of go through the axes or the center line of that oval. And that kind of gives you the right steepness. So that's another kind of strategy that works really well. It can also tell you about the strength of the correlation. If you have a really skinny oval, then you have a strong correlation. If you have a much wider oval, then your correlation is getting weaker and weaker as wider and wider it gets. Okay, let's look at those preconceptions again. So the line should pass through the origin. We ruled that one out. You guys were pretty clear on that one in the Desmos activity, so that one was easy. The next one, the line should pass through as many points as possible. This is a huge misconception when drawing lines of best fit. Sometimes your line of best fit will go through lots of points. More often than not, your line of best fit will pass through very few points, possibly even zero points, especially if your correlation isn't that strong. If you have a really strong correlation, then it's probably going to pass through quite a few points. But it does not have to pass through as many points as possible. It doesn't matter at all how many points it passes through. So that one gets crossed out. That was 70% of you that thought that was uh, something that had to happen. The next one, the line should go in the direction of the trend. This is the biggest idea that has to happen. Because your trend is trying to be a model for what's happening in your data. So it has to match what's happening in the data. So the direction is really important. So that one is true. 90% of you thought that was true, so that's good. The line should go through the first and last point. About a third of you thought this was true. Again, that might happen, but rarely, and it definitely doesn't have to happen. Ms. Burt also posted another picture um, on our outline, which shows a poor example of that as well. So that is a no good preconception. That does not have to happen. The next one, the line's steepness should match the trend. This one's pretty similar with the line should go in the direction of the trend. And about the same amount of you thought this was important. And it is. It's really important. And then the last one, the line should have equal number of points above and below the line. I think the reason that more of you didn't pick that one is because of that idea um, for the example where I had it being forced through the origin. It had equal number above and below but it wasn't spread out along the line. So that one we kind of have to adjust a little bit before we're going to put it as yellow. So it's true, but I see how I've made the line a little bit longer. It has to be spread out along the line. You should be able to cover up the first half and then they should still have balanced points above and below. Cover up the second half should still have balanced points above and below. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a better understanding of how to draw a proper line of best fit.